In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sign. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple and all of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness, and let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. Welcome everyone on this lovely morning and it's great to have the, the, the choir again. So thank you and Diane and I think if, if you after this long music fasting, if you, if yeah. you want to join the choir I'm sure they would be glad. Although we now have just six allowed, so there's still one space for, for some of you. Okay, I, I believe we have some intimations. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I was up at um, Hutton this morning and it was just absolutely glorious, the views right across from the church, just glorious, it's lovely here as well to such a lovely day. No, so um, the other thing to say is a reminder to all the session, we have a very important session meeting on Tuesday evening here in the church at 7 o'clock, so please, please try to make it as it's very important. And I think that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will sing now together the hymn number 550. 550. And uh, if you want and if you can, please stand up for the, for the singing.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come to your house with thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for your love and for your forgiveness and for your word that guides us through our days. We pray that you speak to us. We want to hear your word of eternal life. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to stay focused. Help us to distinguish good from bad and give us strength to stick to good and avoid all forms of evil. Lord, be also with Christians all over the world who gather today to praise your name. And together with the whole your family we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And he went away and he began to proclaim in the Decapolis 
how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. Jesus. Lord, we pray that your healing hand works amongst us. We pray that the ill recover and the pandemic ends. We pray for doctors, nurses, carers and all other helpers. Lord, grant them strength and resilience. Give them hope and faith. And be also with all who are dying. Be with them in their last moments as our Redeemer and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for all leaders, politicians, bosses, teachers and many others whose decisions shape our future. Lord, teach them your law and your righteousness. Fill them with desire for your justice and also with love and understanding for all who are entrusted to their hands. Give them wisdom and decisiveness and your blessing for all hard choices they have to make. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now for those who were injured, who lost their loved ones or were left homeless, by the tornado in southeast of Czech Republic. And we pray that they can find peace in you and that their needs are fulfilled by your mercy and by help of compassionate people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people in Lockerbie and surrounding. We pray that you are with us Lord, show us what is important and what is harmful. Help those who have any kind of problems, pains of body, mind or soul. Lord, comfort and heal them with your spirit and transform this, our area, with your love, mercy and truth. We pray for revival, for new life for us, our families, friends, neighbors. New life by your spirit and your word. Lord, we especially pray for young people and young families. Lord, fill their needs and help them orientate in the confusion of modern world. Help them to find their place in the society and give them solid foundation for their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for your church all over the world. Make it strong in faith to withstand all the storms of life and become strong witness of your presence in our world. We bring to you the Church of Scotland with all its past successes and failures, with its strength and weakness. Lord, lead us through this time of radical changes and give your wisdom and your guidance to all who have to make the decisions. We pray for our presbytery and our congregation and we pray that all the planned changes 
prepare the way for efficient spreading of your gospel and, and your hope. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. Now I'll sing the second hymn, Take My Life, Lord, <coughs> Let It Be, number 502. Jesus, what have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? What have you to, to do with me, Jesus? This was the text from the Mar Mark's Gospel. Why did Jesus come to our world? And what for did God became, become human and accept his earthly experience? Why did he teach people? Why did he yield to be crucified? One of the ancient Christian confessions, the Nicene Creed, says that it was for us and for our salvation that he came down and was incarnate and was made man. For us and for our salvation. But what does this really, really mean? I think somewhere, sometimes we confess this truth, we respect it, we accept it, with our brains, we consent to it, 
in, in theory, but sometimes we are not aware of its real meaning. Uh, for us and our salvation, it must mean also for, for me and my salvation. For each of us, for me and my salvation. Sometimes we are lost in, in the plural of our confessions. We think it's great that Jesus gave his life for all people. He offered his love to everyone, brought hope for all generations, present and, and those to come. But then we feel, how could I think this is mine too? I'm too small, I'm too insignificant for God to notice me. And I'm too bad and too sinful for God to be kind to me. Well, maybe we can find some answers in, in the story which we have heard. The Gospel says that uh, in Gerasim land, certain men lived. Uh, the part of or the country didn't belong to, to Judea and not even to Galilee. It was foreign. And the, a man lived there with, which was possessed by evil spirit. He was dangerous to others as well as to himself. No one had power to calm him down. Well, this diagnosis sounds a bit foreign to our modern minds. Scholars have been trying to recognize which of the psychical illnesses we know could be closest to the description. And of course, some might have similar symptoms. But I think it still uh, doesn't describe properly the seriousness of, of the problem. The Bible says the man was not able to control himself. He was controlled by something or somebody else, uh, by unclean spirit. He even was not able to live among other people, or at least among uh, the, the, the living ones. So he lived in tombs, and when he spotted someone living, he immediately attacked. And others watched him with horror and with contempt. But the question is, what and, or how he would see himself? We have no idea whether he had any, any understanding of himself or whether he was completely out of his mind. Uh, if yes, I think he probably believed that he is the last of all, the most unimportant of all, hopelessly helpless. Maybe he was persuaded that nobody could help him, nobody could be interested in him. And I'm sure such feeling would even increase his hatred toward all other human beings. And maybe the question he asked Jesus was one that he had been asking all the time. What do you want with me, Jesus? Why, why should someone want to, to have something with me? Why should I have any value for someone? But one day Jesus arrives to that land. He sailed on a boat over a large lake, Loch Genesaret. He came with a group of closest followers and they as you probably know the story, they almost died in a storm. Only in the last minute, Jesus calmed the storm down. 
and they arrived to this foreign country. None of the disciples did really know why they had to go to this foreign region. Maybe they hoped in a bit of rest, uh, a holiday abroad, you know, overseas. Because on the Jewish side, they were always surrounded by crowds and they must have felt exhausted. So they, maybe they thought they, they deserve a holiday. But immediately uh, when they arrived, they meet a very strange and also dangerous problem. The demon demoniac watched them from, uh, from afar, when they were far on the lake. Maybe he saw the boats navigating through the gale. Maybe he witnessed Jesus calming down the wind and the waves. And maybe he thought he could also calm down the, the, the storm in, in, in my mind and my body. Maybe he desired to meet this man uh, ruling over powers of, of nature. Maybe the human being somewhere in the depths of, of this miserable creature. Maybe this human being hidden sensed this, this special man could, could help him, could, could bring him freedom. But he still was under the control of, of the evil power used and abused for evil purposes. He ran to Jesus and, and wants to, to drive him away from the place. Well, we realize it was the, the demon in, inside. Uh, and in fact, what he is saying is it, it resembles very much a kind of exorcist formula. Leave Leave God Almighty. God Almighty, leave this, this man for me. This, this, leave this region, this country. Leave it to me. This is something what Jesus doesn't want to do. And he starts talking to, well, to, to the man and to the, to, to the powers which are behind him. He is asking about the name. That's an interesting question. Uh, but in, we realized because of that that the problem was very, very serious. Uh, the name was Legion. Uh, Legion was a word for, for the Roman army. Or at least for a big military unit. And Jesus' time it could have 6,000 men on feet plus 120 or, or so uh, horsemen plus some supporting stuff. So it's a lot. It's a big number. It's a bit, really strong enemy. Dangerous. Almost unbeatable as similarly as, as the Roman army was unbeatable for uh, the whole Europe, in, or most of the Europe in that time. It was enemy whose might was far beyond the strength of a human being. Jesus doesn't quarrel with, with the demons. He just orders the legion to leave the men. The only compromise he makes is that he allows the evil spirits to, to change uh, a vehicle, change a car, to inhabit a herd of swine grazing nearby. Which ends bad because the animals get mad and jump into the lake and drown. They drown almost at the place where Jesus and his disciples were supposed to drown before and were just 
saved by, by Jesus. So the, the conquered demons are or end in, in the conquered sea. All around are shocked, but the unfortunate man is freed forever. The one who has always been attacking everyone in, in the vicinity, the one suddenly sits by the fire, uh, clothed and, and is discussing serious topics with his Savior. The local people, when they see it, uh, those who were or had been frightened of, of that man, they are horrified even, even more now. Well, somebody who is even stronger than the one who, who was a danger for us. It's, it's hard to say what was more frightening for them. Uh, if the taming of the dreaded individual or, or the fate of the, the maddened pigs, or maybe even the loss of, of valuable animals that probably played its role too. So all people from the neighborhood come and beg that Jesus' party leave, uh, should leave the, the area. Well, it's interesting how many times in this short story, how many times someone begs Jesus for something. First, it was the, where the demons to allow, uh, to, or to be allowed to, to go in, in, in the pigs. Now it's, it's the, the people begging Jesus to leave. In the end, it's, it's the, the healed man. Uh, he asks his Savior for permission to join the group of his disciples. Uh, surprisingly, he is not allowed. But, of course, the, the other prayer is, 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 is heard and the whole party packs or pack their, their things back into the boats, navigate back to the other side of the water. Uh, they hardly were able to get you know, the, the water out of the, the boats and they have to go back. Uh, Jesus made his friends to row far over the lake. He exposed them to the danger of death on the sea and danger of, of being attacked by uh, a demoniac. And in the end, they don't spend at the place a single night. I would not call that a foreign holiday. But it's it shows the only reason why Jesus came to that region. The only reason was to meet a single, completely unimportant person, somebody whom nobody other wanted to meet, someone totally hopeless and helpless, someone utterly lost. It's exactly like in the parable of the lost sheep. The last of the hundred sheep and the shepherd is, is looking for, for the lost one. So Jesus sailed over the, the lake in a dangerous, uh, dangerous sail only to meet and to heal this unimportant person. What does this say about Christ? He came for us and our salvation. He risked everything to, to get you and me from the captivity of whatever was controlling us. For a single lost person, he is willing to travel over the ocean. He knows each of us. He knows all of us by name and everyone is important for him. No matter how 
back how important we are or we are not in the human society. He loves us and he went for us through his human life up to the cross. Let us remember it and never forget. And let us thank him for it in a prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we admire your courage with which you saved the unfortunate men. And we are very thankful for your love in which you save people from various problems and troubles. Your love is extraordinary. Lord, we want to follow your lead and example and serve others in the same way as you serve us. Amen. I will sing the last hymn, One More Step Along the World I Go, number 530. 530. Jesus Christ, 
the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you. Amen.